Hello there. Thanks for joining us on another educational edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Theodore Henry. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Today, as we observe National Day of Prayer for Children, always remember to pray for your children as they go out into the world and may face a lot of ills and dangers verbally, visually, or physically. Stay with us as we take you through another well-anticipated half hour. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I'm Lisa Rowe and this is your GIS News for Wednesday, May 29, 2024. The government has mobilized a multi-billion dollar water project to relieve supply issues being faced in the western side of the country over the next three years. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says Cabinet has approved a design and build contract with Vinci Construction Grants projects for the start of the Western Water Resilience Program. This is to install and replace two major transmission pipelines from the Martha Bray Water Treatment Plant to the Terminal Reservoir in St. James and from the Great River Water Treatment Plant in St. James to Negril in Westmoreland. Mr. Holness says the project will enable a significant increase in the supply of water to the areas served by the treatment plants that will be impacted. The pre-engineering phase of this project has commenced at a cost of 32 million Jamaican dollars. This will last six weeks. During that period, the National Water Commission, in collaboration with the Ministry of Finance, will complete the necessary technical and administrative work to facilitate the deployment of US $160 million, that is Jamaican $24.8 billion for the installation and replacement of these two pipelines. The Prime Minister was updating the nation on drought mitigation measures in the House of Representatives on Tuesday. During today's post-Cabinet press briefing, Minister Matthew Samuda added that the project would go through a legal process at the Minister of Finance to enable procurement under emergency circumstances with work expected to start within 12 months. The pipe procurement, because of the size and nature of the pipes that are expected to be used on this project, will see after that period with the Ministry of Finance a four-month delivery window. At that point, once the pipes are in Jamaica, we'll obviously start construction. Now, all things being equal and in a perfect world, we would hope to start sometime towards November. The first legislative amendment to Jamaica's constitution as part of an ongoing reform process was approved in the lower house on Tuesday. Section 61 was amended to replace wording such as the Queen with the Parliament of Jamaica, among others. The bill was piloted by Minister of Legal and Constitutional Affairs Marlene Malahu Fort. She says this is a part of a proposed series of amendments intended to give effect to a constitution enacted by the parliament and approved by the people of Jamaica. The proposed alteration of section 61 at this time is to ensure that the requisite bill providing for the establishment of the Republic of Jamaica will contain the enacting words that are commensurate with Republic status. The amended section will now include enacting words that refer to the Parliament and the people of Jamaica. The new words would be beat enacted by the Parliament of Jamaica by and with the advice and consent of the Senate and the House of Representatives of Jamaica 
or the House of Representatives of Jamaica, as the case may be. Subclause D provides for the amendment of subsection 5 of section 61 by deletion of the words, the Governor General for assent. For the first time in its history, the Jamaica Fire Brigade will be installing a modern first world electronic records management system. Minister of Local Government and Community Development Desmond McKenzie says testing is now ongoing for the new system. This has massive implications for the quality of the high level of service being provided by the agency. In addition to providing inventory management, this system will streamline the JFB's entire building inspection process for properties and this system that has been provided to the brigade will ensure that the inspection schedule, the report of violations and compliance tracking. Minister Mackenzie was making his contribution to the 2024-2025 sectoral debate on Tuesday. He says the new system will create a central electronic database of building plans island-wide, which will give firefighters quick access to floor plans and fire escape routes. It will provide live tracking for fire personnel and equipment to ensure maximum safety and efficiency. It will create and manage firefighters' shift system, including overtime leaf requests thereby ensuring that the efficiency in terms of its frontline workers, preventing undue stress and burnout. This is critical, Madam Speaker. The Overseas Examinations Commission, OEC, has announced a successful disbursement of payments to all teachers involved in marking school-based assessments, SBAs, for the years 2022 and 2023. Executive Director of the OEC, Hector Stevenson, unveiled the report during a post-Cabinet briefing earlier today. He says the Commission is committed to meeting its financial responsibilities and payments for the 2022 assessments include retroactive amounts owed. There are schools that have made submissions that we have had to return for corrections and so on. And as soon as they return to us, we will complete those payments. So, good news. Everybody has been paid who has made submission to the OEC. In response to the report, Minister of Education and Youth Favel Williams lauded the agency for upholding the highest standards of integrity throughout the examination process, as well as the teachers for their commitment. The SBAs have been a part of the CXC examinations assessment structure from its first examination in 1979. We thank our teachers for the long established practice of marking these student-based assessment projects. The Minister of Finance and Public Service says all major benchmarks established by the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB, under the Public Sector Transformation Program have been met. Portfolio Minister Dr. Nigel Clark made the disclosure during his keynote address at the Caribbean Public Sector Financial Management Conference last week. The Public Sector Transformation Project with the IDB is the first project with the IDB and the Government of Jamaica where all of the metrics specified by the IDB at the outset of that loan have been achieved. has not been easy, but we have got it done. Minister Clark says the agreement, which was signed with the IDB approximately six years ago, has improved the delivery and quality of government services and enhanced efficiency in public spending. They provided funding as well as access to technical expertise for us to get this done over a specified period of time. The program focused on information and communications technology, human resource management, rationalization of public bodies, shared services in the public sector, and compensation restructuring, among other areas. And finally, the self-development by 350 micro, small, and medium-sized enterprise MSME operators has been hailed as a step in the right direction. The beneficiaries graduated on the weekend from an online business management training course under the Wisinko Coca-Cola Foundation Growing Together initiative.
Minister with Responsibility for Skills and Digital Transformation, Senator Dana Morris Dixon, lauded the organizer and the participants. Minister Morris Dixon says the more than 422,000 MSMEs in operation are undeniably the backbone of the economy, employing between 60 and 70 percent of workers, with over 90 percent being in the private sector. It's your businesses that are building our country. It's your businesses that are going to be able to take Jamaica forward, and I want you to really believe that. Participants included owners of corner shops, wholesales, groceries, and supermarkets across the Wisinko network. Minister Morris Dixon says the training is a bold and visionary step forward for the MSME sector and our economy. Each of you as participants and now graduates of this program is equipped not only with new tools and knowledge, but also with a vision for what your business can achieve in the new Jamaica. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Lisa Rowe. Thanks for watching. We sometimes face challenges in life because we do not have the resources to help us on our journey, but that should not deter us from excelling. Let's hear the story of one such person who overcame his financial struggles by getting help from the Program of Advancement through Health and Education, PATH. I say to anybody who is struggling to remember who you are deep down. There's nothing wrong with you. You're as smart as the next person who's doing it well. of Advancement Through Health and Education PATH is a social protection intervention administered by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Introduced in 2002, PATH aims to aid individuals from vulnerable households such as children, pregnant and breastfeeding women, persons living with disabilities and elderly dependents. The Conditional Cash Transfer CCT program was created after the reorganization of three previously existing income transfer programs, food stamp, outdoor poor relief and public assistance. With a core belief that education creates avenues out of poverty, PATH provides meaningful ways for persons to achieve their learning goals. Ricardo Allen is one of the many who have benefited from PATH and you may just find his story inspiring. Hi, my name is Ricardo Allen. I'm the founder and CEO of One on One Educational Services. I started on PATH um, at a very early age. At that time, uh, it was actually not PATH, it was food stamps, right? Um, you know, I was living in Rayabo in a Trelawney. Uh, you know, growing up, my mother, we went to the post office and we collected the food stamps and so on. At the time, she would collect it and she would use it to get us food. And then over time, I believe that changed the PATH and that you know, came with more benefits such as going to school and getting breakfast in the morning. One of the ministry's aims is for the program to create a pathway for economic independence. I've benefited from PATH in a number of ways. When I was at Rayabo in a primary actually, we used to get like milk and bull and all of those like things and so on. My mother obviously she would get her check every now and then and she would use it to buy her stuff. I personally benefited from lunch at the school every single day. That's how I was able to, to go to school and, and, and kind of focus on learning and not necessarily focus on um, you know, any other thing. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security through PATH spends over $10 billion annually to assist citizens who are in need. Ricardo is particularly grateful for the support it gave his mother so she could give his siblings what they needed. When you go to school hungry, um, with, with a lot of challenges, it's very difficult to learn. So obviously by, by getting something as simple as breakfast and knowing that lunch is covered um, by, by the PATH program, I was able to kind of focus on my education. Some of the, the hardest time in high school for me was when um, I didn't have the, the support of let's say lunch or I didn't have something or I couldn't afford a pair of shoes to go to school and so on. There was a time when I was going to primary school or college school in Trelawney where I walked barefooted. So these are things that distracts you. And, and takes you away from learning and learning the things that you need to learn in order to get out of that problem you find yourself in anyway. So of course, I mean, PATH was an incredible help for us, my family, my mom. 
With the foundation path laid for him, Ricardo was able to maximize on it, finish school, and is now empowered to impart knowledge and advice to others who are in similar situations he was facing. Success and help is, is almost like a domino effect, all right? You know, it's, it's almost like you help one to help many more, right? And without even telling me, um, just benefiting from that help and the type of person I am, I'm committed to helping as many people as I possibly can, personally and also through my company, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but I can tell you that it has given to me that which I can give, and give to others, right? And, and that's not the funding that path of you. That's not the breakfast nor the lunch. It is the ability to pursue my education. And now I am educated and I can create a successful company. The first advice that I would kind of share is that it's so important to play the long game, right? Almost anything in this life that is worth having is going to take a very long time. Be committed to who you are. Um, be committed to your core. Look around you. One of the things that motivated me was to see my mother struggling. You have to find something that you feel very upset about and angry about that it guides you every single day and guide your decision making. As Ricardo continues his journey, he encourages each and every person to not give up. You should knock on many doors because the worst thing someone can say to you is no. They can't fight you, they can't hurt you, they can't do anything. Ask for what you want. And if someone says no, there are billions of people out there that will say yes. For more information on how you could become a PATH beneficiary, visit your nearest PATH office, the Ministry of Labour and Social Security's website at mlss.gov.jm or call 876-922-8000-13. Pathways, helping you secure a brighter future. Check on your strong friends. Having gone through postpartum depression after having my daughter, I know what mental illness can be like. You may be the one to provide someone with a haven. Very much true because, like she said, you don't know what people are going through. It's also important to know within yourself what's going on because you yourself know you better than anyone else could possibly know you. Being able to be your true self is one of the strongest components of good mental health. You can whisper how you feel or you can shout it out loud, but in whatever you do, if you need help, say something. Protecting your mental health is very important to your overall well-being. It impacts your thoughts, behaviors, and emotions. People, especially men, sometimes suffer in silence because they fear what others might think and the effects it will have on their relationships. We'll now share with you how important it is to deal with your mental health. Thomas Paine, English-born American philosopher, once said, the real man smiles in trouble gather strength from distress, and grows brave by reflection. Statistics indicate that our men and boys continue to suffer in silence, as they are oftentimes not socialized to seek help, and in particular mental health. They are socialized to feel that they are masculine and powerful and strong and they don't have to display or say anything about the issues that affect them. Around the time in high school, I went to Ireland High School, Around when I was doing my C-sec, I started experiencing strange phenom phenomena. So I would start to hallucinate. Of course, you have the, the mood fluctuations, and I'm wondering what is going on. 
I start to get these ideas in my head that, you know, have powers or, you know, what they call delusions of grandeur when a bipolar person becomes in a manic state. They get all of this energy, which is great for creativity. You get all these ideas, but there comes a point where it kind of teeters off. If you're not in control of yourself and your emotions, you can become erratic and sometimes intimidating. There I was in high school, not sure what's going on. And naturally, my father's a pastor. So the first thing he went to, you know, oh, you know, demon possession. So they call up the church and come over to the house and everybody start, you know, pray and olive oil and all sort of thing. And, you know, eventually when that wasn't working too, I'm not saying, you know, that not real and God now work, but, you know, eventually somebody said, let's take him to U hospital and see if there's something else at play. And the doctors did their analysis and they said, okay, this looks like it could be a mental disorder. They started me on a course of medication, get the diagnosis, they thought it was schizophrenia at first because the symptoms are similar. And then it, you go through this whole journey of medication and side effects until you get the right one and you start to come down and they say, okay, this is actually a mental illness called bipolar type one. And all that simply means is he has to go through a lifestyle change. So can't drink as much, definitely can't smoke, have to get my sleep, have to get my rest, have to exercise and for a time stay on medication, right? And it took a while to get to a place of what you would call me a high-functioning software. It took me a while of denial, so I'm on the medication and it's so deceptive, you feel great. I'm normal, not now go on, but as soon as I came off the medication or I start drink too much or I'm out too late, bam, we have what's called an episode. And the thing about having an episode, a man like me in Jamaica, very large, can be intimidating. If I'm on the street alone and I'm not surrounded by a community of people that know me very well, I can be intimidated. One night I'm there, I decide to go off by myself at the bar and, you know, I'm erratic, I'm intense, I'm passionate, I'm going up to random people talking, sharing my crazy ideas and them take it as a, a check. You know, again, we as Jamaican men, we have this thing about aggression and proving ourselves. So immediately, them say, no man, this youth are violated, we have it. Did him so you know big fights start and I'm manic I'm high so if if you are ten me I come hundred so whatever you put into me I'm gonna you know manipulate and come back more so big fights start and eventually somebody else take up a piece of wood and go so wukum and I went on the ground and then he kind of shook me and I kind of came back to my senses for a bit I'm like whoa I'm in an episode I need to get to the hospital I need to get back on my treatment right so that was a wake up call for me personally to take it more seriously because you know your family and friends are worried searching where is my son you can imagine when my mother come into a &E and see me bleeding and in a manic state so at that time i was about what, 18 or so i'm 28 now so i was about 10 years ago or so it made me kind of come to terms with the fact that i have to shift my lifestyle i have to take uh, control not just for myself but for the people around me and thankfully, after I decided to get more serious about it, I haven't had an episode in a very long time, years, as I said. I'm currently a production manager. I was able to get back on track with my dreams. I didn't use this as an excuse to say, all right, I have this thing where I probably can't make up too much noise. I can't go after the big things, just stay quiet, take a small job. I said, no, I still want to be a big filmmaker, I want to make movies, I want to make music, so I decided all I have to do is take a one pill every night or every other night and just don't drink too much, which I can manage, and sleep and work out, that's, that's a good trade-off. One of the most important things I learned about it was, especially with my disorder, it's the community around it, the people around it. Mental health issues do not discriminate. So we need to be mentally aware and mentally prepared. Money are your problem? Kiara your problem? Hey! Whatever the problem is, just let it go because stress is not a flex. A quick way to let go the stress is to find someone you can share your concerns with. And if you can't do that, 
then find other ways to release your stress because stress is not a flex. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has embarked on a journey to help our youth leg the stress, installing wellness benches in schools across Jamaica, setting them up as safe spaces for communication about mental challenges. If you can't find a seat on the bench, get a hold of this exercise to help you alleviate the stress. First of all, I want you to think about the worst thing that offends you and upset you and your experts about. Just think about it. And then, after three, I want to transfer the stress from the brain into the ball and it has to show it up One, two, three. This is where we close the pages on today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. Be sure to join us tomorrow at the same time on this same station for another program that's packaged just for you. Until then, visit our website, jis.gov.jm, for this and more offerings. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Theodore Henry, reminding you to teach your children to pray so if their little heart gets heavy, they can go to God and not the world. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.